Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're good. I'm Thomas, this is Tech Productions. And I'm Greg from London Bridge Bricks. And I forgot what I'm gonna say next. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're good. I'm Thomas, this is Tech Productions. And I'm Greg from London Bridge Bricks. And you're watching London Tech. So a couple of weekends ago, over on Greg's channel, we did two live stream builds, actually. Uh, I was building the Monkey Kid team, Secret HQ, and Greg was building the Ninjago Destiny's Bounty from the Lego Ninjago movie. We had a lot of fun hanging out on that stream, didn't we, Greg? I think it was a really good fun. It was, it was. And what I loved about it as well is I got to wear my, my new t-shirt like, <laughs> as well, uh, which I'm very proud of, folks, because in this stream, or this this particular review video that you're watching, I'm very pro Ninjago. Monkey Kid, yeah, yeah, it's all right, I suppose. But obviously, I, I leave Monkey Kid uh, to Thomas, uh, <laughs> who is a monkey himself, and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that Monkey Kid clothing. And when, when Monkey Kid Clover comes out, I'll be dressed head to toe in it, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got to admit, Thomas, he's got, he's got a fantastic jacket, uh, and I'll definitely be up for some of that. And yeah. uh, I'll even be up for, you know, for one of those uh, Teal headphones or something like that. That'd be yeah. nice. Or maybe, maybe, right, uh, Lego could really push the boat out if you, if you, if you pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> and they come up with like a broomstick or something like that. They look like the staff that he's got. I think that'd be quite good. And then we can walk around all day going... <laughs> <laughs> So there will be a link in the description down below to Greg's channel, so you can check that out. I'm sure you know who he is. Um, we'll also put card on the screens now to the uh, first two live streams. If you haven't watched that, go back. Like I said, we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs doing that. But now you are here for the review. We will jump straight in. We uh, choose. We've got five categories to go over. We've got build experience, minifigures, build quality, actual likeness and then value for money we rate each category out of five we'll give it a score we'll tally them up at the end and we'll see which one comes out on top this particular head-to-head -head is going to be very close i can feel it we have picked two really really good sets arguably i think two of the best sets the themes have ever produced i don't yeah, think that yeah, I, I, that. Well, obviously, well, I mean my set folks comes back from 2017 you know and, and, and a lot of people didn't like the ninjago movie so it was quite contentious i like it i like the first half of it i thought the second half was a bit weak but you know what it's lego it's a bit of fun uh and i and I, but what, what what you did get from that movie was some astonishing lego sets for example ninjago city arguably one of the best sets i mean it was the best set as far as i'm concerned from 2017 and from that from that movie spawned the movie version of destiny's bounty and i think it's an absolute cracker obviously i mean I, I bought it thomas at a time but i didn't even know anything about ninjago in fact I, I didn't even call it ninjago i just thought it was ninja go you know all this sort of thing i mean i didn't, I didn't have a clue i could i couldn't tell you who the lloyd was or anything like that and by the way folks if you wonder why i call it lloyd the lloyd is it in the movie they call him the lloyd which i think is much better than lloyd to be honest and anyone i know who's called lloyd these days i do generally call him the lloyd as well but anyway that's just between you and me and uh, anybody else who watches this as well but uh i will say this they are cracking boats they really are and i think this is going to be closer than what you think uh, mm -hmm. but course, as always do let us know what you think in the comments below and um and yeah so thomas let's let, let, let's let, let's uh, let's jump into it shall we let's uh let's uh, unmoor the boats and get going with it. Oh. <laughs> okay so we'll start with build experience as we said on the first one we have a lot of fun with me and greg do anything together just general chit chat so build experience is always great fun when we're hanging out we try to kind of sweep that to one side just a little bit and try uh look at it from a more technical aspect so build experience for the monkey kid secret hq it was great it was great and it started off with the instructions and this is something that i've not really picked up on too much i've built a lot of star wars sets i've built a lot of city speed champions loads of other stuff but the monkey kid instructions, they just really stand out. There's a bar along the bottom that I'll put on screen now that you guys can see. And it's like a progress bar. And as you turn each page, it gets further, monkey kid gets further and further along. Just loads of little annotations and details on these instructions. It's, it really was the little things that made the, the, 
the whole package of that uh, build just really, really nice. There's a few Technic panels, which I'm not necessarily a massive fan of with this set, but I will say it's an industrial style ship. It wouldn't work on something like the, uh, like the Destiny's Bounty, but with the Monkey Kid CKHU, because of all those containers, the big crane, I think it does kind of fit the aesthetic. So that didn't bother me. Um, but the main the main boat is actually quite technic heavy. Uh, um, sorry, it's quite brick built heavy. It's just yeah. technic bricks. It's not so much loads of technic arms and different things like that. Uh, so I was very very uh, pleased with that. Um, and it doesn't feel too uh, repetitive for the most part. I mean, it it looks like it should because it's very symmetrical. The base is at least. But uh, but no, it's it's quite a long build. But it didn't feel too repetitive at all. I am going to go in strong here. Build experience, my first Monkey Kid set as well, which I might add. I'm, I'm kind of worried. I've started started at the best. And I've only you started got, with the best. I, I'm worried it's only downhill from here. But build experience, five out of five for me. Oh, five out of five. Yep. Blimey. Holy yep. moly, he's gone in strong there. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, I, tell you, I might as well tell you uh, straight off the bat, I've got in, I've got in for a five for my build experience. S simply because, folks... Right. It, it, it's 14 bags of pure fun. It really is. It's literally bags of fun. The whole thing was. Uh, I, I loved it. Bag one, I thought, was, was one of my favorite bags because you literally built the whole complete whole mm -hmm. just from bag one. So it's mean, straight away. You did bag one. I mean, that took me about two and a half hours straight away, folks. I really did. Uh, <laughs> I'm a terrorist builder now into man. I really am. And uh, I, I actually loved it. And then, the, you know, bag two, three onwards, like, you know, you was constructing everything like that. And you had all these different rooms as well. Uh, you know, even a Woo Dojo in there and stuff like that, special prints. That. But what I loved all the way through it, right? And even though this is set in the, the movie universe, there were plenty of nods to the TV series all the way through it as well. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a fantastic build. Every bag brought something different it, it, it was it wasn't boring in no way shape or form and it, I, and i've built quite a few ninjago sets and this is by far yeah. the best ninjago set i mean actually do you know what it's actually one of the best sets full stop that i've ever built i mean it's definitely i thomas honestly it has to be it really is i think it's in my top three sets of all time wow. um you know what I mean? Even even the Tante Four uh, isn't in that isn't even in that league or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, it's in the league as far as I'm concerned with Slave One and stuff like that. And even comparing it to what was my favourite ship, uh, which was the Creator Three in One. I mean, it, it looks puny compared to that. This thing is huge. I mean, it's 55 centimetres long. It's got two massive dragon heads on the front of it. Not one like all, all the other bounties have. This one's got two on it, uh, and I just think it's sensational. I really do. It looks. It looks beautiful, it is beautiful, and the playability is absolutely top notch. It really is. And uh, my, out of my favorite constructive part of the whole thing, I will say this, that bags 12, 13, and 14, when you're, when you're constructing and assembling up the bridge area, oh, it's fantastic, it really is. The roof that's made up of basically beige uh, garage doors, yeah, it's, it's such a brilliant idea. It really yeah. is. And uh, and that's a nice thing about this particular boat, folks. It's got a bridge. You know, I think I think uh, if this whole review was based on what on what the bridges look like on these boats, mine would win, you know, hands down without any other uh, thing. I, I think I think uh, I think the best way of describing the the, the, um, the bridge on, on the Monkey Kid vessel is it's a platform. Uh, it's a platform with a monitor on it, if you're lucky. Okay, yeah. okay. He's, he's playing dirty now. He's, he's, he's trying to... Trying <laughs> to okay. I'm going to push that out as much as I can. He's pushing uh, buttons now. Okay, well, I think that's a perfect time to move on to minifigures. So uh, uh, maybe, maybe I think I might have the edge on. So you get May. You get May in her uh, White Dragon outfit, which is really nice. Unfortunately, not exclusive, but still a really nice figure. Very, very detailed. You get the big fig Sandy, which definitely adds a lot of value to the set. Again, not exclusive as of the second wave, but um, still a great figure nonetheless. And you get the cat with the mohawk as well. Mo, that's a really nice addition. Oh. 
Uh, you get Pigsy in an alternate outfit to the one in the food truck. Uh, you could, of course, get uh, MK. You get three ball clones, which is really nice. I'm starting to uh, amass a ball clone army, so that's a lot of fun. Um, and general ironclad as well you get so a really nice selection of figures uh, you can kind of pit against each other very detailed um, not too many uh, exclusive ones but they are so detailed the side leg printing and the jewel molding on the monkey kid figure it's it's really really the monkey kid figures really do excel for me and again I gave it a five I gave it a five yeah Woo! Okay, well, this is where I feel, uh, because I'm not biased, folks, I'm really not. I, 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 I'll tell you how I think it is. Uh, I, I don't pump up the points. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know what? Uh, for me, the figures was the weakest part of this. Now, I originally was going to uh, give it a three. But you know what? I'm actually going to give it a four. Uh, and the reason being is that this is one of those few sets, and there's not many of them out there, folks. There may never have been another one like it. But you get the whole Ninjago team in one set. Now, another thing that sort of bumped it up for me as well is that you get um, several of those figures, like uh, Nia and Cole and certainly so Lloyd, they've got arm prints. I've never known Ninjago figures get arm prints before. So that, for me, any figure, I don't care who you are, uh, you know, I, I, I just think uh, absolutely that's definitely worth an extra point having those arm prints, especially Nia. Actually, out of all the figures, Nia is my favourite. And okay. every single, yeah, oh yeah, I think she looks excellent. The the, 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 the battleship grey uh, and everything like that and the, the prints that she's used, I think they just look brilliant. Now, she comes with a spear. It looks pretty good. Every single one of them have got their own different weapons. And uh, I don't know, I, I, even Zane with his arrow, uh, which is, you know, bow and arrow, which I, I think is, is kind of a bit odd. Because I never, he always seems to come with a bow and arrow, but I've never actually seen him use uh, the bow arrow at all. And Cole, with his great big giant hammer, uh, I think he looks pretty good as well. And he's got, again, he's got a nice print as well on his arm. And then Lloyd, uh, he's got his katanas and stuff like that. And Kai's got two of them, actually, he comes with, which I think is pretty good. But the, the, the actual, uh, I don't know, since, since then, I would say that uh, there certainly hasn't been any, not many with arm prints, but uh, there have been plenty, especially Zane, for example, and Jay, who's my favourite out of the Ninjago team, that have come with really good torso prints and stuff like that. So... I don't know. That's that's where I kind of do mark it down. But I will I will say this about one touch that I do really like. Master Wu, right? He's got this, um, he, he, you know, very symbolic uh, character. We was even joking actually. Who would win uh, the fight? Who, 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 Monkey Kid and Master Wu? Uh, let us know what you think about it down in the uh, description below. It's an interesting one, I think. Maybe the, the Monkey King would actually do him, but hey, he's a he's a demigod for the, for the love of God's sake. So, <laughs> I think he deserves to. But anyway. <laughs> Um, what I will say is this, so with Master Wu, he's got this symbol on, it, on the back of his torso, uh, and that symbol uh, is the same symbol that's on the smaller of the of, of the sails on the, on the Destiny's Bounty. And I just think that is just a lovely little detail, and it's mm -hmm. why I gave it a good, strong, healthy four out of five. Nice, nice, nice. I, li I do like that continuity and those little kind of tidbits that just kind of point back to whether it be in the set or whether it be older sets and stuff and that's one thing i'm really excited i know ninjago does do this very well and it is kind of reference other sets and have little easter eggs to other things so as monkey kid goes on i am really looking forward to seeing some of those references whether it be in stickers whether it be torso prints just different <laughs> things like that I, I do do really enjoy that so we're going to our next category now, category number three, which is build quality. So this is like structure, uh, what it feels like in your hand kind of thing, but as well, play features, how much playability it's got. Greg, would you like to kickstart with the build quality of the bounty? Well, the, the build quality for me, I think it's just phenomenal. Uh, the, 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 I mean, t to me, I look at it and I don't see it as really necessarily something that's something I'd want to necessarily play with because the... Uh, it just looks too good. It looks too nice and pristine, uh, almost delicate in some respects. Now, if I was to if I was to mark it down on anything, and I'm really kind of scraping the barrel here to try and find fault with it, I would say the lanterns that you get on the decked area they're really weedy. Like you've only got to knock them slightly, and they'll fall over. Right. Is it? Otherwise, it's almost like building a modular building. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's so strong and tough, and the different yeah. sections come off. Uh, you could take away uh, the bridge 
to reveal the dojo and you can go underneath there and you've got this like uh, you got you get this wonderful uh feature in there you've got like Wu's bedroom uh in there and you've got this bed now normally speaking and i've built a few modulars now folks and one or two others kind of big career expert ones and you know like it's even sesame street that's a pretty good build of a building uh, and they all come with these beds and stuff like that and they're all kind of pretty funky and they look good and they're nice construction but this one this one came with master Wu's bed right you could actually open it up like so and you could actually put him in the bed and i just think it looks amazing it really does uh, so that that I thought was a, a really and it was strong as well. It's not like it's just flimsy or anything like that. But overall, yeah, I, I gave that one, I gave that one a five. And the only the only thing I mark it down on, and like I said, folks, I'm really scraping the barrel is the lanterns and maybe just maybe the sails. I would like to a little bit more going on there. They kind of the sails themselves are fantastic. They look brilliant, lovely prints, very strong material. Um, but the masts for them. I think could have been a little bit better, but you know what? I think I, th I think overall, um, it definitely deserves a five. It's very very strong. I mean, it weighs a ton. It's really yeah. heavy. two thousand two hundred odd parts. I mean, it was like a you know it, it, two two hundred odd pieces bigger uh, than than your set. Yeah, your set obviously comes with uh, you know a, a, a all sorts of bits and pieces coming along with it, like mechs and so forth. Yeah. But, um, I gave it a five. I think it's very deserving of a five, but I'm really, really scraping the barrel to find any fault with it. I really, yeah, don't. yeah, that's that's good. And I'm, I'm going to say I matched it for a five as well. I have to say, there's a quote um, in the description on Lego's website for the Monkey Kid HQ, and it's mm -hmm. impressive display, unlimited play, and you can see it kind of behind me there. It is a phenomenal display piece, but when you open this thing up, it's mm -hmm. huge, and there's so much area to kind of play about you've got sandy's hammock you've got a little cat flat for mo you've got the part in the tv show where they're playing games at the tv there's that aspect to it um yeah it's just and, and one thing that i absolutely love in sets or one thing or in fact one thing i hate in sets is when you get loads of little side builds or little side things and you've got nowhere to put them and keep them whereas this one you get a mech for monkey kid Pigsy and May both get uh, speed boats and yeah. you can put them inside and store them inside the ship and they don't look out of place. They've got sort of racks where you can put the tools to make it look like the characters are working on them. Just little things like that have gone a real long way uh, for me in this set. And that is why I also gave it a five. There's a stud shooter that's hidden at the front, which looks really nice. That pops out. That would look menacing if you ever were, we were coming up into contact with that. Um, and then the, cr the crane as well. There's just a lot going on in this set. Uh, it displays well, just like the bounty. But when you do open it up, um, as a kid, I think I would have a lot of fun playing yeah. with uh, the yeah. situation. Uh, even I was impressed with that. When you, when you could open it up, I mean, it was like it was like Mos Eisley, the Mos yeah. Eisley. Yeah, it, yeah. Eisley yeah. Sets, folks. And, it, and, and if you've got it, you'll know exactly what I mean by this. But when you open it up and it kind of expands around, and you're like, yeah. blimey, this thing's actually huge. It yeah. really is. Um, he's, 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 he's definitely got everything there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we go on to now actual likeness. Oh. Now, again, I was a bit uh, nitpicky with this one. It's kind of tedious, and I can kind of see why they've why they've made this choice, but I did mark it down. I did give it a four out of five. There's very uh, there's actually very few reference shots uh, for the CKHQ. It's not got a lot of screen time, to be honest, in the in the first season of Monkey Kid. But the boat um, in the show is probably a, is, is a bit narrower, proportionally narrower and taller. But I can see why Lego have gone to make it a bit wider, a bit more stable, um, and they can fit all those bits in around the bottom. Um, and then the height would have just got ridiculous, I think. They didn't need the headroom for all the figures and stuff in the upper areas. So I can see why they made that decision. Also, if they had made it any bigger, I could, I, I'm already struggling to fit it in the uh, storage box that I bought for it. I've got to take the crane off and take a couple of the, the, the big display uh, banner along the top. I've got to take that off if I can't fit it in there. So I'm actually quite thankful that they didn't go too much bigger with it. But yeah, that is possibly the... Um, the most jarring thing and the, the the one area i would mark this set down but what about you greg uh well for me 
for me, I mean, I gave it a five. I mean, it's exactly what it is in the movie. It's, it, the movie is a, a kind of, I'm sure there's a bit of digital stuff going on there as well, folks, but it is a stop motion movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, you know, it's brilliantly executed. And the boat, well, the boat is the boat. And I, I, you know what? I need to look into the history of this movie and stuff like that because I need to see, you know, how far ahead did Lego design these sets? Before they actually then said, right, this is yeah. this is the final design. This is what's going in the movie because this is exactly it, folks. It really, now, my boat actually did feature quite heavily in the movie, especially the first half, anyway. And uh, at the end, now, I can't ever remember it actually ever flying around in the air, but certainly it was getting around quite a lot in the sea because uh, Garmadon's um, kind of island was like literally, literally you could throw a stone uh, uh, across the sea, and it was kind of there. That's why it was forever attacking. Uh, it really was, but. Uh, no, I, I think, I mean, for me, I mean, it's an easy, it was a, it was a five, because it is, basically, they've, ta they've taken what's in the movie and uh, and said, there, here you go, you got it there as a, you know, as a, as a, as a toy for you. So, you know, I, for, for me, that was, it was the, the easiest five I'm ever going to give for actual likeness, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that ship does uh, does capture the lightness. I did. Have, I haven't seen the Ninjago movie, but I have seen some pictures just to reference. And yeah, it is, it is very, very accurate. So fair play on that one. Okay, this is going to be an interesting one, and I think I might raise some eyebrows with my uh, decisions on this one. Value for money. Monkey Kid is notoriously given a bad rep because of value for money and the price. Now, hear me out on this one. It's because it's true. That's why I tell it's because it's true. No, 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 no. Hear, me out, hear me out. Hear me out. There's, there's a very big difference between expensive and value for money. And I am by <laughs> no means, I am no means saying that this set is not expensive. It's very, very expensive. £160 retail on this set is a lot of money to be spending on plastic Lego. I can appreciate that for sure. I really, really can. But like I said, when we talk about build quality and the display purpose of it, it's and, and then the, the way it like I said, I think Lego have captured it beautif beautifully, impressive display, unlimited play. It's I genuinely think it's one of the best all round Lego sets ever to be built. You and, it's just, and it's just a shame that it won't go on sale. You would have to get a good promo and some double VIP points to actually bring it. <laughs> all I would say is that is that Lego marketeers, right? They love people like Thomas. Like, <laughs> because for someone who, who keeps uh, giving us this, the, the rhetoric, the marketing rhetoric, uh, you, 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 uh, what, what can I say? You suck it into it. But no, I can completely understand why, why, why it is. It, it, w Thomas and I have spoken for hours, if not days, about <laughs> a subject of value for money. And really, um, sometimes, quite often, and certainly this is the case in my opinion anyway, uh, that comes down to how it makes you feel. That, that mm -hmm. value. And it doesn't always come down to money. It just comes down to how you feel about it. I mean, okay, value for money for me. I mean, again, I don't think I'm going to ever have one that's as easy as this. It's a, it's a, it's a massive five. In fact, I, if I could, I'd give it six. Um, <laughs> ridiculously cheap. Back in the day. So it was, only, it was only like four years ago that this came out. Uh, and it was £109.99 for something like 2,200 pieces, which, let me put that into perspective for you folks, that's less than 5p a brick. So people were just going out and just buying the sets anyway just to part them out because it was worth it just for that. Now, even today, you know, on, on, you know, on, the, on the market, because uh, it's been it's long retired now, folks, like you can still pick up a new one, if you're lucky, for around sort of £170. And it's still worth it for that. You know, I quite comfortably, right, I wouldn't even hesitate to spend £200 on this set because it's that good. In fact, it's simply exquisitely designed. It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, and for me, the, I bought it at a time, and I knew nothing about Lego. I didn't know anything about Ninjago or anything like that. I bought it because it is just a gorgeous-looking boat. And I don't say that very often, folks. I really don't. But that, for me, is why I gave it a five. Yeah, I, I I know I'm gonna ruffle feathers. I think in the comments down below. So definitely give me some abuse if you feel I deserve it. But I also did give it a five out of five. I think if I had seen this as a kid walking into the Lego store and just seeing the way it opens up, mm. I I I would have been an absolute sucker for that. And like I said, you get 
the each of the little boats um have uh the stud shooters on and stuff i i just think there is a lot of value in this set and like i said i'm not taking away the 160 pounds there's a lot to be spending on lego especially for a kid but i do think it will go down as one of the ultimate all-round um greatest lego sets i don't really believe that <laughs> So, Greg, I think if my maths is not mistaken, that leaves us at a score of 24 out of 25 each. It does. This is a massive score, folks. A massive score for two, let's face it, huge Lego sets. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, how do you feel about that, Thomas? Like, if, if, if you, uh, let, let me say this to you folks, right? I often say this to Thomas, is it, or, 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 or when, I'm, when we're doing streaming together and stuff like that. If you was, say for instance, right, you were going out on the town. I mean, in our case, we're, go, we're going out on the sea or something like that. We're down a, a beautiful canal along the River Thames, uh, you know, uh, for pins o'clock or, or, or whatever. Uh, at what boat would you like to be seen in? Would you like to be seen in an old tug? Uh, albeit it's a yellow and blue one, uh, you, you know, uh, which could be going anywhere for all we know. Uh, or would you like to be seen in a beautiful ship, uh, you know, reminiscent of the Catis Ark or something like that, something with, 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 a, with a little bit of historical looking value? That's, that's all I would say to that. It really is. It, it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's different to, like I say, an old banger uh, and a beautiful old Rolls Royce, in my opinion. <laughs> but they you know, each to their own, the taste. The one thing I will say is this. The, the Monkey Kid uh, Secret HQ is a wonderful place set, and I think, and to be to be fair, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna back you up a little bit on this, Thomas. I it kind of reminds me. This is going to be a very strange analogy, folks. Really, <laughs> um, but it kind of reminds me in a funny way of the James Bond DB5. Right? I'll tell you why. Because at certain angles, it doesn't look quite right. It's mm -hmm. Uh, some sometimes it looks great. It looks like the, 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 the proper source material, like the DB5, right? But what it does get, what inches it up a little bit more in the scoring action is the playability. And everyone I know that's built with DB5 says having that ejector seat in it, having that shield that comes up in the back, all those little play features completely make up for it. Yeah. And that's how I see the, uh, the, the monkey kids. Uh, secret HQ, it really is, and I think both, both, both of them, uh, I think, are, are brilliant designs. They're, you know, they're exquisite. They really are for, for completely different reasons. Uh, they, yeah. uh, you know, um, they're very, they're, they're completely different designs yeah, in their own faithful way. They're awesome. Yeah, they really are. I agree. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't think a score draw is is unfair to be honest i think maybe there would be people that dis disagree with a certain couple of our scores maybe but like i said be sure to let us know in the comments down below it's amazing we are both in asia in china with these ships but they're mm -hmm. completely different completely different um and that's why we both love them and i think <laughs> i think <laughs> in fairness to both of us greg is very close to being uh, on the verge of buying the monkey kids secret hq and I think, and I think the uh, the Destiny's Bounty might be my first Ninjago set. So I think that that says it all. I think we've uh, we've impressed each other. I think both of these builds. Yeah, I mean, we we have got an idea. Actually, we have got an idea for for how we could maybe settle this mm -hmm. one for all. And it's it's kind of like a twist on the term drop test. Except <laughs> instead of doing a drop test, we're thinking of does it of a float test. And seeing which one can actually float for the longest. Now we're talking; it's going to be milliseconds, folks. Let's face it; <laughs> they, they, they got more holes in these uh, than, than than some sort of, you know, holy hole cheese or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous; it really is. But that's the only thing we can think of. Uh, <clears throat> Leicester cheese is what I'm thinking, I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, that's the only way we can think of maybe settling this. But maybe you lot out there, you lovely lot. Maybe they used her into Monkey Kid. There's certainly plenty of you out there that are into the Yago. And let us as well know what you think should be the best out of the two sets. So thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate all your support, both on the live streams that will be linked in the description below, as will Greg's channel. So go check him out. And we look forward to doing plenty more of these London Tech installments for you guys. I'm Thomas. This is Tech Productions. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. See you later.
Oh, if you've enjoyed this video, how about subscribing right here? Check out the London Tech playlist up there, or if you fancy something different, take a look at my 100 plus minifigure haul. See you next time.